we have to discuss the Ukrainians, if the Ukrainians are ready to protest with uh, Liana Novikova, who is a junior research analyst at Kyiv International Institute of Sociology, and Pavlo Burkovsky, who is a political analyst at Democratic Initiative Foundations. Thanks for coming. And before we start, I would like to ask to present the graph, because what we are, while we are speaking, that the, according to the data from service ca carried by your institutions, Institute of Sociology, 40% uh, of adult residents of Ukraine were willing to take part in protest actions. Uh, compared to previous year, the level of protest readiness rose from 43 to 49. And um, yeah, it's probably shrank a bit, but um, can you explain us? So um, how uh, willing are Ukrainians to protest and why? <laughs> okay, so as we see, there is an increase and after that a decline in readiness to protest and it is mainly due to the readiness to participate in electional campaign to vote and uh, you know in 2016 this increase uh, was due to uh, some discussion about early parliamentary elections. There was, there was a massively discussion about this possibility, but however, there was no parliamentary election and uh, the issue was silent. And as we can a result, we can see that this level of readiness to protest has decreased. But it, and at the same time, during 2016 and 2017, uh, less and less people are ready to protest in such way as authorized rallies and demonstrations. Less and less people. Uh, Petra, so uh, what are the concerns of the Ukrainians and also how would you describe that? Because recently I also, there was a number of even uh, the US American publication were kind of speaking that, you know, Ukrainians are on the urge of another riot, but uh, how fair, how true is that? So if you mentioned Americans, uh, let me recall uh, the issue that was uh, discussed in the uh, Washington Post in uh, 2016 on the eve of the presidential elections. They said that there are three hottest issues in American politics. It's guns, rain, uh, race and religion. Compare, speaking about Ukraine, I also could say that there are three hottest issues for Ukrainians. This is show social injustice, impunity of politicians, and the Russian threat. So these are three main concerns, concerns that could mobilize people on the streets and uh, that could trigger a uh, massive protest, but at the same time, these issues could trigger a massive mobilization, a positive mobilization, like one uh, that uh, we uh, had uh, experienced in 2014, when a lot of people took part in a voluntary battalions, in a volunteer work, in a, uh, helping the state to cope with all of the threats. Um, I would like also to bring another uh, graph where it explains uh, what kind of the uh, political participation people are um, ready to, to undergo. So it's about the election campaign. Yeah, it's collection, collect signatures. Uh, there are authorized rallies, but it's rather a small figure. So can you comment? Yes. And uh, as I said, uh, this uh, choice of authorized rallies and demonstrations has decreased during the past two years. And, uh, uh, you know, um, people are quite tired. And also uh, there are very low level of um, trust to the parliament and to the president in society, it's um, uh, quite impossible that without some trigger, there some will kind of be a big trigger, yes, like big really trigger and massive uh, potential impulse, there was hardly, hardly possible uh, new protest, new big uh, rally or new revolution. Would you agree on that? And also, you, you see that uh, we, we discussed that the economic situation is not that good, and all other research shows that people are pretty feel insecure ab about because of the inflation and the other issue. Also, you know, from time to time we hear the news. There are every pro every Sunday there is a protest. There are other issues connected to, like for instance, uh, anything connected to Mrs. Saakashvili. So our foreign partners are always looking and saying, like, is it serious? Is it serious? How big is that? You know, the figures, if you, speak about, if you speak about public opinion, figures could be deceptive. So if you uh, just return back to the previous slide and you will see that the uh, number of the people who of the protest sentiments, the figure of the protest sentiments was quite low in September 2013. It mm -hmm. was just two months before the uh, beginning of the Euromaidan. So uh, it's impossible with the simple 
uh, I, uh, with no, you know, with no, um, uh, so uh, KEYS, the Kiev Inst Institute for International Sociology is very uh, nice and authoritative uh, uh, institution, but still, uh, if we speak about omnibus polls, it's very hard to detect uh, really um, very interesting trends. You know, uh, when it's, it's just a general picture. If you want to know exactly where the society are moving, whether it's uh, beginning to uh, stop tolerating uh, social injustice uh, or impunity or Russian threat, you should uh, m make a more um, specialized uh, public opinion post. If we speak about these g digits, I would say that um, actually uh, there, is no, uh, s th there, is, there is no sense to worry about. So yes, uh, protest sentiments are quite high, but at the same time, it doesn't mean that uh, we are on the edge of some uh, major disruption. Uh, what are the, where are the place for um, anti-corruption? <laughs> and to what extent this is the trigger? And you know, like, uh, what do people mean by that? Corruption is, of course, uh, main problem and main issue which is discussed and which is very uh, wor worry uh, many people. But we live with that. People live with that and um, maybe it's not enough for us to um, protest against corruption in such ways. Maybe uh, people tend to believe that some uh, peaceful, um, peaceful ways of protest will be useful against corruption. No, not such ways as, for example, rallies and demonstrations. If you allow me to just yeah. say uh, a few words. So in my opinion, uh, corruption is the issue where the social injustice meets uh, the impunity of politicians. So it's, I would say, it's a, like a Molotov cocktail. And if it really starts stirring, we would, again, would, uh, can see the people who would throw the real Molotov cocktails at the buildings of politicians who are in, involved in, uh, in the corruption. And there is also a threat that we have a lot of people who participated in the military conflict. And they also, uh, you know, these people have very, uh, very uh, sharp uh, sense of uh, injustice. And uh, uh, they really, uh, have a resentment towards the people uh, who, whom they protected and who really did not do what they had to do. To, they uh, had to change the country and they didn't, uh, uh, how to say, meet their commitments. So, in fact, that is a huge concern always because these kind of the, the, the these kind of people, especially you know the veterans, the people who used to fight, uh, they're extremely vocal, and maybe you know it's not that representative compared to the major uh, part of the society. So, I don't really see you know that we see the create an armed force. There are very little people. Um, not somebody significant who would be ready to protest with using the weapon. Is, it yeah. the, is this question asked and you know, what are the, the figures on that if you speak about the, or it's, or, or just people very cautious about speaking that way? As I know, uh, our institute uh, didn't ask respondents uh, direct questions about weapons. Um, it's so discussive if we should ask. But you know, the, this question is now more and more discussed in mass media and in the society. Maybe it would be useful for uh, sociologists and for society to ask about it. And um, I would have the same question, but also following on on that, that we would have the presidential election in a year. So is it the case that in that period of time, you know, the people are not going to do something significant because they say they know that they would have their say you know, rather uh, soon? You know, if you look at the Ukrainians and, and how they behave on the EU elections, actually, our nation is very responsible. So if there is a chance, uh, if the people believe that elections would be free and fair, they would rather take ballots, not arms. But if there is a threat that the vote will be, f um, how to say, um, fixed, then uh, people uh, could start thinking about other ways to uh, protect their uh, right to democracy. Um, so uh, thanks a lot. That were two brilliant Ukrainian sociologists, uh, Liana Novikova from the Kiev Institute of Sociology and uh, Petro Burkovsky, who is the political analyst at Democratic Initiatives Foundation. <laughs>